it's Jeff Knepper with Flow Software, and for this project, we are going to focus on how we can build a dashboard that will allow a user to look at information that has been calculated by Flow, and then change that information to reflect uh, the proper value. And we'll do this and maintain the version history um, and an audit trail on that information. So to get started, we're going to use our flow config. We will go ahead and build a little project here in our model. Um, for this one, we'll just call this our data validation example. We'll use a measure. This will be a uh, good production for site A. I'm going to browse and just use my juice factory demo. I've got a bottle count. We'll bring the tag over. Call it good. And as you've seen me do before, I'll just make this a daily aggregate. Let's choose the correct aggregation. This is a totalizer, so I'm going to use my counter. Everything else here looks right. And let's go ahead and backfill this. Uh, today's May the 3rd. I'll backfill this back to April the 1st. Okay, so that is now off and calculated in the background. Flow's data engine has requested all of the data from the underlying historian. It's aggregating daily totals, uh, and then it is storing the result of those daily totals into the Flow database. So this is a daily total that I want to look back at and uh, have the capability to be able to say, yes, this is the right value, or no, this is uh, needs adjusted. I'm going to use a flow dashboard uh, in order to be able to um, put an application in front of the user that is going to do this action. So I'll start with a folder. It would help if I start inside of a new folder. Um, we'll just call it the same. And let's do a dashboard. This will be my main report. And I'm also going to have a dashboard. That is my data edit. OK, so on my main report, I want to display this information. So how do we want to display it? Um, let's do a, we'll do two things. We'll do a table. We'll do a daily table. And we'll also do a, how about a time-based chart that's daily as well. Um, just going to format this the way that I'd like it to look. For my table, my period is going to be the past two weeks. And in my sections, I'm just going to drag over the daily measure. Okay, so this is my good production for site A. Nothing more for me to do here. I'll leave it like that. And for my time-based chart, I'll do the same thing. Two weeks. And for this, let's do a column. And we'll leave all of my other settings kind of defaulted. Um, there is one other setting I should probably go ahead and change under my table. Let's come in and let's indicate um, whether or not uh, any of my data has been has been changed on this. So where do we find that? Um, I want to look under my general indicators. Show comments, show quality, show version, show no value, show version is true. OK, so let's launch this. We'll take a look and we'll open it up. And I can see where I've got data back to April the 24th. My values. And then on my report, a visual representation of that.
I'm going to go ahead and change the formatting just a little bit. Okay. So that is my main report. Um, I'm currently logged in as an admin. I'm going to sign myself out. I can open up this main report and there are all of the data points. Now what I'm going to do on my ability to edit this is I'm going to build on my, on my edit dashboard a form. So we're going to use a time-based form. That's a daily measure. Let's go and do the exact same thing. We'll do period weeks for two. And we'll bring in the daily total. Change the name. Let's launch this dashboard. So this is a form. A form allows a user to interact with the flow database. So that means that I should be able to click on any of these values and change the history on them. But I'm not signed in, so it won't let me. So if I wanted to say that this value was supposed to be 610,000, Notice that the uh, box, when I click on the cell, I get a white border. That means I cannot, even though I can highlight it, I can't effectively make any change to it. I can type in it, but nothing actually happens there. So I'm unauthorized. All right. But if I sign in, based on the permissions that I have, in my case, I'm set up as an admin on this system. When I sign in now, I can click and I can overwrite and tab away. And when I do that, that input will now come back over to the flow database and overwrite on the main report that value of 610. So if I look at what's actually happened, notice that the dot has shown up. That tells me that that is not the original value. If I click on the cell, like I can click on any piece of information on the flow dashboard. I can now see there's no comments. I can see the details of the raw data that's associated to that daily total. And in the history, I can see the original value, which was 599.404, and now my preferred value of 610. Notice that I have the ability to go back to the previous value which I've just done by clicking the check mark, and that allows me to move a value up to the preferred status. I get another version, I get another um, piece of history. So just like that, I can easily take data that Flow has calculated, I can change it. Um, anything that I have built that might um, link off of this piece of information, would then automatically rerun. So let me show you that. And I also want to clean up my navigation just a little bit on my dashboard to make it easier for my users. So let's do both of these things. I'm going to start by adding a component, which is navigation. I'll just put it here in the top right hand corner. Um, I need to put a segment over here. So where do I want to go? I want to go to the main report when someone clicks on this. Do I want a button? Sure. Um, and when they go, where do I want them to go? To the main report? Perfect. Uh, I'll do the exact same thing on my main report, component navigation. This is to edit the data. Data edit, that's where they'll go. Um, I do have the option also to say whether or not I want this to open in a new window or a new tab. So, I'm sorry, uh, do, I want it to open in the current window, I should have said, or a new tab. So if I just want it to bring up a new tab, and so I don't need 
the back button essentially. Um, they could just close the tab, I would hit true. I'll leave it at false. So now my little uh, dashboard has that navigation capability. I actually renamed it in the wrong spot. One second. There we go. That's where I wanted to change it to uh, edit uh, values. There we go. And I won't go take the time to change it on this form, but you can see now I can navigate back and forth. Again, user-based permissions tells me whether or not I can actually do anything here. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate to you how if I had another piece of information, let's say I was taking this daily total, drag it onto itself, I get a week to date total. This is now my week to date. The week to date is going to operate based on totalizing the value for each of the days. So there's my aggregation. I'm summing it. Let's tell it to go ahead and do that. We'll give it just a second to go ahead and calculate. Um, principle of flow, I'm not hitting the underlying data source, in this case the historian, to do this week to date. Instead, I'm adding up the daily totals that have already been performed. So that gives me that value very quickly. So let's go ahead and take a look at the current um, week to date values, 3.2 million. So my week started on the 24th and it's progressing forward. So now at uh, 3.2 million, Let's go ahead and let's adjust this to be a very large number. So we'll say that we actually did 3 million units today. Very large number, 3 million units. Me entering that will cause automatically my week to date number to come in here uh, and recalculate. And so now we can see my week to date number has increased to 5.5. Five uh, million. So I've picked up that that big jump based on that, and I have added to a second version for that calc. So the original was two point five. That was version one. Now the preferred preferred version, uh, version two, is four point nine, um, and then the May second to May third period was originally 3.2 million, and now it has increased to 5.5 million. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I could do this exact same setup instead of doing a daily. If I, maybe I wanted this to be every five minutes, I wanted um, a even smaller interval of time that I wanted to look at on that. Well, that's not a problem. Of course, I could do a minutely, and this could be my, um, my uh, minute. Uh, total. I could use this measure instead of using the daily measure. So this could now be what I'm backfilling and totaling if I just maybe do it to yesterday. So now I could build my exact same table just like I did before using a minutely. I could be looking at uh, the last hour for my period or maybe the full day um, looking for any abnormalities. Um, I don't have to aggregate the data. Maybe it's not a totalizer. Maybe it's um, a flow value. Um, and I just want to know the last or the first value in every sample. I could do that by changing the aggregate. Um, of course, the minutely could roll up to the daily, daily to weekly. And so if I edited any of the values in the minutely, same principle, create a separate dashboard with a form for the minutelys, um, I would automatically then uh, affect a recalculation of any other measure that's linked to it. If you have any questions about this, we'd love to walk through it with you. You can email us directly at information at flow-software.com. Appreciate you watching the video. Uh, let us know in the comments if it was helpful and uh, feel free uh, to reach out for a demo or if you'd like to download some trial software, you can do so directly from our website. Uh, the link is in the description. Thank you.